Peace family, what good? It's your man, Ocean. We back at it. The freedom fight continues. I very much appreciate your time for being here. You could have been anywhere in the YouTube universe, but you decided to be here with me. That's big. And like I said, I just want to reiterate the fact that I appreciate it. I got a little something that I want to go over with the family today. You know, is I I I watched the video, okay? TBA, the Black Authority, and the the title of the video. You know, I just want to be a I want to reference my references, okay? So. The title of the video was What Are Black People's Demands? And it's a video that he did maybe a, um, over a week ago. And uh, you know, I just been studying this video recently. I watched this video at least four, five, six, seven times over the, over the past week. Just trying to be sure that I could articulate some of the key points and some of the key reasons to the stuff that we're getting ready to get into today. Now, as we all know that the social discourse around the world, you know, it's, it's definitely a thing that people are waking up to and starting to be honest about racism and, and about the role that it has played in you know, being effective and keeping black people down and systemic oppression and all of this stuff. So, if you got too wide, then you can see that a lot of this shit has finally came to a head. It kind of, it boiled to a head. So now the shit is spilling over, and and it spilled over into the street to the fact to the point that. Not only black, but white people too. But you got people out in the street risking life and life and death in order to be a part of change, a change of society, in order to try to right some of the wrongs that America has done to its own people, okay? So, basically... What and I, I'm so very appreciative of this video that I watched from the Black Authority, but basically the Black Authority, he uh took time to make a list and spell out what reparations should should be and what it should mean to not only us but to them. Okay, and um, it's a it's a beautiful list. I'm going to take my time and I'm going to go through this list and, you know, I'm going to be able to touch and make more crucial points on on, on some, some things on the list than I am on other parts of the list. But, you know, I'll tell you like this. It's a list of seven items and number seven is just important, just as important as number one. So I hate to be how I'm going to do, I hate to do this, how I'm going to do this, to try to ensure that people stay longer for the video, but I got to do what I got to do at the same time, so I, I thought about just running through the list real fast and showing it all to you, but if you don't have enough patience to sit and get to number seven, then that's just something that you got to deal with, and you know, but it, the blanket term that what basically black people are looking for is reparations, reparations all across the board. Not just one particular part of reparations, but reparations all across the board. This whole system, systemic oppression system that we live under need to be totally dismantled. And, and you know, this is where we're going to start at. So, Reparation across the board. That's just a blanket term. Now, I'm about to get straight into the list of what reparations across the board entails. So, without, you know, dragging it along too far, let's just get into it. Now, what's number one on this list? Number one on this, li on this list 
the agenda must address black people and black people only. Let me say that again so that, you know, this agenda, if you want these people to get out the street and you don't and you don't want them to end up back in the street protesting, rioting, whatever you want to call it, as soon as the next bad thing go bad, and soon as we get as soon as they show us again that we the permanent underclass, this is what we're gonna start at. This is the first thing on first thing on the list to let you know that you dealing with my people and you operating in accordance with what's the right thing for my people. The agenda must address black people and black people only. We don't, you know, we, we had enough of so-called alliances and, you know, coalitions with people that really see themselves as, as, you know, de facto white supremacists. And I don't want to sit over here and come up here and bash any other nationality. That's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to do any national, nation, nationality bashing. But what I am going to say that we've seen programs in the past that was supposedly, quote unquote, to help black people. And, you know, to, quote unquote, atone for slavery. But it always end up helping everybody itself for black people affirmative action can be your prime example when you know affirmative action was supposedly put in place to eradicate some of the systemic oppression that has been placed on us for over these 400 years but you see that nine times out of ten the people who benefited from affirmative action was everybody else besides black people and black people only got a a, a small Small, very small percentage of whatever was supposed to be allocated for us in affirmative action. So, in order to know that we actually are working on a reparations program for black people, to in order to know that we moving in the, in the right direction, then the first thing is first, it must address us and only us. And, you know, everybody else. I hate to be like this, but you got to fall in line after us, man. We, we 350 years, 250 years, however many of free labor, then another 150 years of Jim Crow. You know, we got a lot of ground to make up. So the agenda must address black people and black people only. And I'm just skimming over this. OK, you for the full for the full meal deal and the full whole layout. Better than I can do it. I must admit, TBA, the Black Authority, going to lay it out a lot better than I am. But for the full thing, definitely go check out that video, man, from, from the Black Authority, man. The Black Media. The Black Media is playing a, a vital role in pushing this movement. Although the national media is never going to acknowledge the Black Media because the black media is squeezing the national media for their power right now without being acknowledged by the national media. So it'll be foolish for the national media to acknowledge the black media. But this whole thing is being driven by the black media, man. And it's given a, a mind state. It's given a, it's given a aggressive and unapologetic, unapologetic mind frame to black people that, you know, power is not given, it's taken. So we on the take right now. But anyway, I'm moving on. I don't know what that was about. I'm moving on. Number two. Black society's top priority is economic empowerment. Or that's the long way to say cut the check. I'm going to say this before I get into any kind of spill. Reparations is more than a check. It's atonement for all of this shit. But the biggest way to ensure the way that we make sure that what the way that we protect number one, which is the agenda must address black people and black people only. The way that we secure that 
is by black society top priority being economic empowerment. And that, like, I, that go back to like what I said. That's the cut the check. That's the financial part of reparations. That's the uh, that's the that's the free labor that you got. Nobody. That's that's how you build generational wealth, man. All the all the free labor, two hundred fifty years of free labor that they got off of the blood, sweat, and tears of the black man, the black woman, the black child in America, is why all these corporations can stand to. Be in the red for three or four years and not have to worry about it because they financially back and they financially support it to the to the point that it is hardly in a way for them to fail because you don't you you get so much money up front all you got to do is be you know what I mean if you got that 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 right skin tone I ain't gonna say that's all you gotta do you gotta have to hustle or whatever but. That skin tone that it it, it it give you certain opportunities that you not you know what I mean afforded if you don't have that skin tone and definitely if you black so we got to start out with a check man and you know at this point it's been calculated that the descendants of American slaves are all up with toward the amount of twenty trillion maybe sixteen eighteen trillion dollars man so in order for America to only start beginning to pay their debt off to the descendants of American slaves, we're going to have to start with that check, man. 16 to 20 trillion, man. It's growing. The debt is growing day by day. So it's like the time is now. And you can't see for the longest they was able to tell us. There's no way, no way we can cut a check for Black America. The, Mer the we don't even have that money. But you know, coronavirus, Corona played. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Corona played a major part in in affecting and showing a lot of truths. And one truth that it showed is the American government can come up with money whenever the fuck they wanted to, whenever they want to come up with the money, they can come up with it. So it's it's all about. If they give a fuck about that cause or not. And up until this point, it's not been prevalent for America to give a fuck about atonement for slavery because America is built and sustained off of white supremacy. So that's a, like a conundrum for white supremacy to atone for slavery. It's like. You taking the power away from yourself and giving it to the people that you took the power from in the first place. And one thing we know about power is power is never given. Power is always taken. So that's why we coming for and we own the tape for our check. It's simple. It's plain. So like I said, that money, the check is not nearly full reparations. But it's definitely a major vital part of reparation in order to start walking back this 400 years headed toward 500 years of total manipulation, chaos, destruction. You know that not all white people are responsible for, but the ones who are willing and sustainer, willing helpers and sustainers. And benefit, bene, benefactors of white supremacy. Okay, now we're going to move on. We're going to move on. I, I, that word, white supremacy, is white supremacy. You can't talk about slavery. You can't talk about white. I mean, I'm sorry. You can't talk about slavery. You can't talk about reparation. You can't talk about systemic oppression. You can't talk about. I can't breathe. Get your fucking knee off my neck. You can't talk about none of that shit without mentioning this word right here, white supremacy. So number three is the total and uh, total dismantling of systemic white supremacy. And that's let me just you know in order for me to I can't go in on this point like TBA did. That right? So, but I'm in order for me to illustrate what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna give. A, I'm just gonna paint a picture of a scenario of a motherfucker that 
benefited for white supremacy. So, and so I'm just freestyling right now. And the first motherfucker that, you know what I mean, come to my mind right now it, uh, is, I'm just going to say Amber Geiger. Okay. I'm going to show you, show you how Amber Geiger, I'm going to show you how Amber Geiger uh, benefited from systemic white supremacy. Okay. Alma Geiger, go to a man's house. They live in the same apartment complex that she live in. I don't know how she got in the man's house, but when she got in there, she killed him. She shot and killed him. To make a long story short, Amber Geiger ended up getting 10 years in jail for going in the house and murdering a man in, in cold blood. 10 years in jail. When you still got people right now that's still locked up in the 90s off crack charges. People that look like me. So, you know, with, with, with a lot of shit being left out in, in from beginning to end in that story that I just told, but you being able to have common sense and correlate what I'm trying to say. How in the fuck on a ten, and on that ten year sentence, we know that she ain't she serving. She gonna serve five of them years. You get the you so. Amber Geiger might be thirty years old. She might be 27, 28 years old. So how in the fuck you get the you get the null and void somebody else life for the rest of eternity? But you only get to lose five years of your life, and you know it was just. The way that it was handled, the way that she, the uh, investigation was done and everything, it was just a, a total farce. And the reason that you can do that and get away with certain shit like that is because you benefit from the system of white supremacy. And that was just on a small, very minuscule level. But it's so many, white supremacy is so, so intertwined in the fabric of America, man, that you know, out after the dismount of, of white supremacy, we not, might not be able to call this motherfucker America no more. That's just how that's just how deep you know what I mean it is in the fabric of this play, man. So this got to be that got to be part of the agenda, man. The total annihilation, the total dismantling of white supremacy, man. It got to be part of the agenda or it's not the agenda that we fighting for. We can't have nobody, you know, it got to be, we can't have, this shit got to be across the board. Other than that, this, this we not, we, we standing on this square right here and we not moving off for it. And I'm going to carry on to the next point. The next point is white supremacy and police violence is a humans human rights violation. So basically, that go back to what I was just saying about the Amber Gag case. That let you know that all this shit, all this shit go together. It's a system. The system has to be dismantled. That's why it has to be reparations in order to dismantle the system. Reparations is the answer to dismantling the white supremacy system. And I appreciate. I made a fucked up video one time because I was mad. It was at the beginning of this year. And if you if you freaking on my channel, you might have got a chance to see it. But I end up taking it down. And I called out everybody that I was, had been following as far as uh this black power shit go. The people that I act. Man, the long show short try to call out TBI. I said some fucked up shit about him. So I'm going to go ahead and just... You know, he. I'm sure he never heard it. You might have never heard it, but maybe you one of the people who did hear, heard it. Maybe you one of the people who did hear it. So I'm just trying to atone for that myself right now and say, say that I apologize for saying fucked up shit about TBA. But I ain't even going to say, I'm not even going to get into the specifics of what I said or anything like that, but I will. I, I, I apologize for that right now because if anybody that's been a consistent strong, thorough, unapologetic, intelligent, aggressive voice for 
black empowerment, even though I only heard of him in the last couple of years, but he been on, he been ever since the beginning of YouTube. This is what he been on here doing. Okay, so I'm I'm not go I'm not gonna even play that game with him like that. This is a strong thorough man. But anyway, white supremacy and police violence is a human right violation. Like I said, all of this shit come together. But what they're basically saying here. All this police union ass shit, so you can't properly prosecute the police after he killed a black man, or the way that you see this nigga Zimmerman got away with, you know what I mean? Taking that young man, Trayvon Martin, God bless the dead, and I'm sure that he back on this earth again already by now, doing it even better. But the way that Zimmerman get a chance, get away to. Walk around after he took that man life as as a free man, and and the way that all of these police situations knees to the neck, and the police brutality. This shit is the only the only way that this shit is handled is by like capital punishment or death penalty or life sentence. It got to be mandatory shit on the books. That's saying that if you do this to a black person, out of sheer, the only reason or the, the sole, one of the main reasons is out of white supremacy or just because you're a police, then this come with these mandatory minimum, mandatory charges and mandatory years that you get once you found guilty of this. And that's, you know what I'm saying, basically solidifying the fact that it's a human right violation that you get. Mandatory sentencing and mandatory charges on the shit, and this is the only way that you know we could possibly feel safe moving forward with any type of authority figure that's supposed to be policing anybody that look like me. That we gotta have assurances that if you caught doing wrong by these people, you get to get at least the same thing done to you. In return, if you kill you kill a black man, you call, I not think it ought to go even down to motherfucking Karens calling the police on black people, all of that type of shit, bro. That shit need to come with uh, mandatory mandatory or uh, charges and sentencing, man. Cause you know, at the end of the day, man, we citizens of this country, man. Not no second rate citizen, not no permanent. On the class that y'all motherfuckers wish that we were cast as. And when I say you guys or y'all or whatever the fuck, I'm talking to the ones that I'm supposed to be talking to and not the ones that I'm not supposed to be talking to, okay? But that shit got to be, it got to be mandatory sentencing and all that kind of shit. And it just got to be laws on the books that protect us from that shit. And in no, 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 no way that no slick ass attorney can can uh talk the charges down or the fake ass DA can get up there and, and not charge because he a police his damn self. No, all that shit gotta be eradicated. This is what we standing on. This is what this is why niggas is in the street. So if we didn't if you didn't know why niggas is in the street or you weren't able to articulate why niggas was in the street fighting for whatever they fighting for, this is a list of why niggas is in the street. This is the list. This is what we standing on and what we demanding. This is a list of reparations, all right? So number five, schools can no longer be weaponized against black children. And, you know, this point is definitely could be articulated. All of the points can be articulated better by TBA. Watch the fucking video, man. But number five, schools can be longer can no longer be weaponized against black children. And that just, you know, go for the racist ass teachers, racist ass police at the school, slamming little babies. They are they always trying to uh make you make you think your baby's slow. Your baby need to be on medicine. No. We're gonna we going the school is not gonna target black children with their bullshit anymore. And I'm not even gonna attempt to go in any deeper on that. Like I said, watch, watch your boy TBA on for that one right there. Number six, remove symbols of institutionalized racism on public grounds. And that's 
Like a motherfucker said, I'm, I, I, I seen somebody make a post today on, on one of the social media platforms. Fuck that platform because it's just like this platform. Definitely owned and ran by white supremacy. White supremacists, but you know what I'm saying? What they said on the post was if you remove all the racial uh, statues and shit from all the courthouses in America, then that means you're going to remove damn near all of the the, the uh, statues and shit. And I'm for that. We got all all of those general elites at the courthouse and in town square. Them shit need to be gone. Why in the fuck? If, first off, if them motherfuckers, why in the fuck is the niggas that you beat in a war? Why you got statues of the nigga you beat in a war anyway? That's always been a, the stupid part to me. But me as a black man and, uh, you know, any other black man that got to walk. Why? Why? What what kind of feeling are you expecting me to have when I got to walk by and see, you know, a, a statue of a motherfucker that fought to keep me in captivity? Huh? And I supposed to feel like this the this the land of the free, but you got a statue of a motherfucker right there who wanted who who gave his life and lived his life to keep me in captivity and to keep his knee on my neck. So they they should be removed. And um, uh, you know, some people think that it's you know they should be in uh museums or whatever. And you know, I ain't got nothing. Okay, put them in museum. Cause the history definitely don't need to be forgot, but it just don't need to be broadcast as a uh, an acceptable part of our history. This this need to be a showing part of our history. These these were slave owners and they they fought for to keep the goddamn the bullshit going as long as they fought, longer they could, and they like I said, they gave their life for it. You know that motherfucker walked right through my hometown, Robert E. Lee, or whichever one one of them Lee motherfuckers. March right through my hometown, so I'm I'm from the deep south. I'm sure you can hear that shit in my vernacular, and I I meant for you to hear. But yeah, that's number six: the removal of symbols of uh, institutionalized racism on public ground. I totally agree with all of this shit. And this number seven, I also want you to get listen to uh my guy TBA, cause the way that he broke down. Number seven was beautiful, but mandatory public and private contracts reserved for black businesses, 20%. So if, just imagine, bro, you can just do that, a, a quick, quick mouth thing in your head right quick, bro. Just imagine if 20% of the business was allocated for black business, man. We wouldn't need America. We it'll be Black Wall Street all over again. It'll be it'll be Tulsa. It'll be Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1920 all over again. The black man will be thriving. If he if the black man would guarantee a 20% piece of that pie, no matter what, cause right now, you know how much of that pie we get right now, bro? 3%. Um, the, the black people in America have three percent of the wealth in America, bro. So it, just imagine if we were allocated twenty percent of the wealth in America, being that we built the motherfucking country on our back, blood, sweat, and tears. So we y'all ain't giving us shit. But I ain't even I can't articulate it correctly like I want to, and I'm I'm not even gonna wreck my brain into trying to be as articulate. As that man is, and when I can just tell you to check the video out, but we this this is a I, I did present to you if you didn't ever see the list, I did present to you the list that uh TBA put out there for us to, to go by, man. And we're looking forward to change. I'm looking forward to I, I thank the Lord that I'm him being a part of this hit history and and being a part of this change, and we I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to feeling like the playing field is evening out, man. And you know, maybe I might be an old man one day, 
before all of this shit even start to, you know, what I'm start to transpire. But long as I can sit up and say, in the midst of this shit, I stood firm, and I, you know, made sure that I was on the right side of it, and I fought for something, and I didn't just go for anything. Then I'm okay with it. And I know that I'm fighting in this fight. And I know I'm fighting on the right side of this fight. So that's what it's all about for me. And that, and I appreciate the Black Authority for presenting this list. I appreciate the, the Black Authority. Anyway, it's your man, Ocean to Ghost, man. I, I hope that this was information for you to use. And next time that you come across that situation, well, what is reparation? Well, you, we got a list right here now, okay? So here's the list of the demands, and we standing on that, and we ain't moving out that. This is your boy, Ocean the Ghost. This is the Tell the Truth program. Come back again. We'll do this shit again. Also, like, subscribe, and share my videos.